The first step for removing the screws is to cut a slot in them with either a Dremel or a very fine blade uh, so you can then put a screwdriver into it. So after removing the three screws, I uh, managed to pop the cap off, but it's all joined together. So the tab's in there for charging, connect to the small circuit board, which is underneath that is connected to a battery. Now at the moment I'm having trouble with actually getting that battery out, it's just not budging. I've tried putting a piece of metal down there and trying to lift it out from underneath. Uh, that hasn't worked, so the next step will be to I'm going to take these soldering tabs off give me a little more space in there so I can see if I can pull it out from on top but um, if that doesn't work next option will be to drill a hole underneath where the battery is and try and push the battery out from underneath after not being able to pull it out from um, the top uh, using a heat gun, I've just tried to heat up the outer casing and also whatever is actually holding um, the batteries in place, um, but this hasn't worked. So the heat gun didn't work, but what I ended up doing was drilling a hole in the end, and it's all just starting to come out now. One battery still stuck in there. Like so. All right, well we might have a chance now. Tracking down these batteries and seeing if we can replace them. So both batteries are now out. You can just see that there's a huge amount of silicon down the bottom that's holding those batteries in. Uh, so the only way was to put pressure from the back and. You know, I probably could have skipped a couple of stages and not damaged all this and not have taken that off if I'd known just to drill a hole on the back side of this and then pushed it all out from behind. Um, so now we'll go online, we'll see if we can find some batteries to replace this with. So the batteries are finally showing up. It took about four weeks for these to come through from China. Um, now I ended up getting four of them because the price difference was about $2 between getting two batteries and four batteries with most of the cost being um, in the actual shipping. Uh, this came to a total of $30 Australian and the battery code that we're looking for okay, is 14 for 30 okay, where the 14 is the diameter and the 43 is the length. Um, these are 750 milliamps, so slightly bigger than the other ones that were in there. And all that should mean is that we get a bit more battery life out of uh, out of the setup. So what we'll do next is we'll put them in. Uh, we'll start doing some soldering. Now, if we look at the original batteries, uh, put the new one up next to it. Uh, they're identical in size. Uh, exactly what we're looking for. Now let's look over to soldering it all up. Uh, what I've done is I've grabbed the two new batteries and I've put it into the holder. I had to narrow the tabs a little bit because they weren't quite fitting into the slots on the board. Um, you need a positive on one end and a negative up there as well. And then down the bottom we're going to bridge the negative to the positive. And we're also going to add in a link wire as well which connects up through the centre. So if we look at this, okay, you can see on there you've got B negative and on the right hand side there you've got B positive. Okay, and that link wire uh, which I've just made up is going to join down the bottom through here. Okay, like so. If we look back at the original, this one here, that had a piece of steel which created that link wire from the bottom through to the top, and that snapped off when I was disassembling. So I'm just making a new one uh, out of some uh, wire here. So as you can see, positive has been connected through here. Negative on that side, linking wire coming down at the bottom. And so the next step will be to bridge these three tabs down the bottom, like so. All right, and then we measure across these two here. Okay. 
Okay. I'm getting 7.8 volts. So I've put the batteries inside and I've soldered the tabs on that lid through to the board as well. So if you come around this side here, you can see I've soldered those on. And that will compress down. Uh, it's a pretty tight fit. Um, so I had to drop that circuit board down as low as I possibly could onto the batteries. Okay, so a very little gap in there. And that will fit in, um, but it is a tight fit. But uh, the issue I had was when I was soldering these tabs across here, uh, when I was redoing it to put them back down and push it down lower, I accidentally bridged this one through to that one with a soldering iron and it sparked. I was hoping that it wouldn't cause a problem. I still have a voltage across this side from the batteries, uh, about 7.8 volts. So that's fine, but when I try and read a voltage across this side, which goes up to these two um, terminals here, uh, there's no voltage reading. Um, I was hoping that when I connect it to the bike, perhaps there's a microprocessor in there or something that will then allow the, um, the voltage to flow through. So I took it home, put it onto the bike, um, but nothing's working. So I think when I bridge that, um, I've killed the circuit board. Um, so that's the end of that project really. Um, you win some, you lose some. Um, I think it is definitely possible to repair this. Uh, the easiest way is to, uh, as shown through the video, is to die grind a little um, slot in there to get the screws out, drill a hole in the bottom and push it out from the inside instead of don't try and pull that out because that won't work very well. Um, replace those batteries and just solder them back in again. But importantly, make sure you don't bridge the, bridge the terminals. Um, I think I've killed it with that. Um, so I don't have another one of these to experiment with. Um, so I'm going to have to go out and buy... Uh, the whole unit which i think is about 120 aud compared to 30 australian dollars so about four times the price um, but you win some you lose some hopefully this has been helpful and will give you an idea on how to do it yourself